I'm one of the co-founders and um, the CEO of Farm Crowding. What I love most about working in Farm Crowding is knowing that um, coming to work every day um, is empowering someone's life, um, one farmer's life, wherever they are in the rural communities. They can do their job better and effectively because of my own little quota that I contribute um, to Farm Crowding. Before Farm Crowdy, um, I was doing a lot of things. I had a makeup business. I was a makeup artist for 10 years. Um, then I had a cleaning business going on. Then I had a third business called Ojawa. Basically, what we do is I used to organize local market. I was staying on the mainland and my church was on the island. So every time I come to church, people always ask me, can you help me buy pepper? Can you help me buy meat? Can you help me buy this? So I thought, okay. Um, why not just bring the market down to Lekki so they can just shop? So I would gather people from market women from Malto, from Uyibu, from Jibo market and just gather them in Lekki. So they sell to people um, cheaper than they would usually get it on the island. The market is usually last Saturday of every month. So I started getting orders like, I can't wait till last Saturday, can you deliver to my house? So I would get shopping list and deliver to people's house. But the margins was not really making sense because you spent a lot on logistics and all. So I thought, okay, I've heard they have cheaper food stuff in the north. So why not travel to the north? So I went to Joss. I didn't know anybody in Joss. I just went to Joss, um, got to Joss, went to their market where they sell food stuff. And I asked them, okay, where are the farms located? So they directed me to Barricane Ladi. So this huge, my first tomato farm ever, huge tomato farm, fresh tomatoes. I'm like, wow. So I called my friends in Lagos and I said, you know what, I would like to bring tomatoes to Lagos. So I asked them to borrow me money. So I was able to borrow 200K here, 100K there, 50K there, just crowdfunded everything, put it together. Um, bought a whole truckload of tomatoes, called my um, allergy in Mount Tov and asked him, oh, allergy, can you sell for me? And he said, oh, sell. But I didn't bother to ask him what to buy or how should I buy. I just bought, you know, sent the truck to Lagos and I was told um, between 17 to 18 hours, my truck should get to Lagos. But unfortunately, the truck didn't get to Lagos until maybe 24 hours later. I found out that the truck broke down. Eventually, when we got to Mount 12, they had not started um, offloading, so you have to wait till they are offloading time. Then the more the tomatoes stayed, the more it got worse. So eventually, when we opened the truck, brought out the tomatoes, half of the tomatoes had already gone bad. But it was, for me, I just enjoyed it. So I did it again and again. So I would usually collect money together like that, travel, then bring in tomatoes. Then the major problem is uh, I discovered was when I'm in the farm, I would call the allergy and ask him how much is a basket of tomato today? We'll tell you oh, it's 20k or 17k. By the time you get to the market, prices would have changed, maybe gone low, you know. And the same tomatoes that your cost was about, maybe your cost based on what allergy had told me is maybe 20k. By the time you get them out of, they may have dropped price to 14k. So it was not helping the business. So I thought, how can I be in charge and have control? So I decided to own my own farm. So I spoke to one of the farmers and I said, you know what, I want to partner with you. I will send you money to farm. Um, you farm on my behalf. Then when we are done, we'll split profit. So I ran that farm and um, I would ask this guy to send me pictures, videos, because it wasn't just I'm in Lagos. The guy would say, Madam, I don't have a phone to send you pictures, you know, and all of that. And um, I was hoping and praying that he ran my farm. So eventually it was time for harvest. Um, went to Joss, got there and discovered that um, the guy married the third wife. <laughs> and um, he didn't really do what he was meant to do with the farm. And um, then they had a pest outbreak. So the pest outbreak affected the tomatoes. It didn't, it didn't even do the, I was told I had two hectares, but I didn't have two hectares. I didn't measure, I didn't really pay attention. I just trusted and you know, gave money to this guy. And um, by the time I got there, I didn't even see up to 20% of the farm. So 
I did all of that and I came back and I said, you know what, I think I have to reevaluate um, this my Greek business and all of that. And um, Oyeka at the time and I sang in the same church, in the same choir. So he was meant to be an investor in my business. I was trying to bring him in to invest and all. So I told him about it. I said, this is what I am struggling with and all. And he then said, oh, I have this idea. I'm trying to, you know, use technology to solve this problem. And that was how I got on board with Farm Crowdy. Ever since I joined Farm Crowdy, I've been able to do this on a larger scale. I had no background in technology. So the ability to reach people to raise funds for these farmers and do it on a larger scale is fantastic. So um, that's another thing I'm grateful for, you know, to be part of Farm Crowdy. Why I love working in farm crowding, one is the fact that we are helping farmers, we are empowering farmers, we are increasing food productivity in Nigeria. And the other bit is also the fact that you look around you and you see a lot of youth, young people involved in agriculture. And uh, for that, I, it makes me love my job. I'm here today with the founders of Farm Crowdy. Let's start, can you introduce yourself? My name is Ifani Anazebo, VP Products and Data. Uh, my name is Demita Fuemontel, I'm um, CEO. Hi, I'm Akinelo Felix, the CFO. My name is Juma Mayo, I'm CEO of Farm Crowd. And I'm Onyeka Akuma, I'm CEO of Farm Crowd. I want to find out how did you guys all meet at the start of Farm Crowdy? Not necessarily where you started back in the days, but how did Farm Crowdy start? The first meeting was, was in um, Oriental. Uh, I think I remember when I had the idea, I spoke to Ifani first. I told him to come along and um, let's see if we could source farmers we could work with. Uh, in trying to find farmers we could work with, we found out that okay, we need to be dealing with finance. So we called Akinele. Um, Akinele then came um, afterwards. And I, I mean, the meeting with Akinele was can you get us somebody that will work with us in the finance team? And I was like, oh, he's actually I'm like, no, 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 I don't want you. You're too, you're too up there. I want to. I was like, no, 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 let's, let's. And then we talked and we spoke about it. And then he came on board. Mm -hmm. And um, after I came today, was okay, we now need to build. I mean, I thought I could build a website myself, but <clears throat> I then found out that uh, we needed technology, proper technology to, to, to work on the project. And then we looked for Jimo. And Jimo had always been my go-to guy when it comes to technology. Uh, if I was my resource person, I can leave my hands. I have known Jimbo for, for, uh, for some time, I think uh, nine years now, 18 years or so. I have known Jimbo. Uh, I can leave was because we, 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 at that time we had seen Jonah and he had consulted on a different project. We have uh, handling the accounting bit. Um, and then we then got involved in operations. And it was not like that. We need somebody that will be going to the farm and uh, doing some ground work. And I remember there was one lady that uh, I used to source farm produce from just and bring it to my 12 and sell. And uh, at that time, we, used to, we, we were singing in the same choir. <laughs> it's like, oh, there's this person I know. And uh, that's how we got to church with her. Talk away. So I think that was the connection and then we started having meetings, consistent meetings together. And it was every Thursday uh, we the Koi, uh, so we are planning towards the project forward. Right? So that was the connection for all of us. So how's it been working with Oyeka, Jima, everybody? How's it been just working together? <laughs> I, I, one thing I like about them is that they're very excellent people. Oh. They go for the great Oyeka involves quality. He, he sets um, international benchmarks for whatever we do here. Yeah. Same, same goes for every, every single department here. So it's been very, been a very worthwhile experience for me personally. I'm sure they, I'm sure they can <laughs> see the same thing too. It can be annoying sometimes, um, but um, the most important thing is we always go back and come back to, okay, let's see how we can compromise. Because you know, we have different people with different personalities, different backgrounds, and you're trying to bring them all together. So it's uh, it can be really annoying, but eventually we find so when you can look at this and say, okay, beyond my selfish gain, what would be best for you know, the organization that you can align to that and make you this show? I believe it's a, it's a good balance because um, we have, I think, I think, for instance, my personality gets you serious. 
Um, so we have a, a blend of play with seriousness. So we don't get too serious, we work hard, we also play hard. Um, fundamentally also, in most important things, um, having it at the back of our mind that each and every one of us has the best of the company at heart. So no matter how much we argue, if you look at it, we eventually realize um, this person is making his or her own case because he or she feels this is the best direction to go for the good of the company. So it's been a good thing. Yeah. What about you, Jimmy? It's been fantastic. Working here, fantastic. Part of the things we use to set out our core values are things that we also live by. So we talk of integrity, we talk of humility, we talk of being people smart. We talk about having fun. Um, you know, all of these things are uh, imbibed in. So he talked about quality and work. Um, all these things help us gauge ourselves. And I think it's also how we also select who joins the team. So we want replicas of us <laughs> yeah, as much as possible. Yeah. That people that are, that are live by the same values. Um, yeah, I think it's been exciting. I mean, I don't know if we all well led it. Um, our strengths and weaknesses and balancing it out uh, across the board. So I've heard this, but one of the key things I want is you guys have been very successful in less than two years. So what is the key? What is the secret for that success? Uh, I would say that uh, the ability to learn from our errors and quickly tweak. So it's not like you're casting stone to say, this is how I want it, this is how it should be done. So most times when things go, maybe not the way we planned it to go, we quickly sit down with group and say, okay, what can we do? What are the lessons? We don't joke with lessons, we learn hard. So we don't joke with it, we infuse that back into how we can make the model more you know, achievable. And also I think another bit that has helped is that uh, which Wienka usually talks about a lot is you are not replicating yourself most times. You are, you are choosing people that can complement. So I won't say because uh, you won't say because it's a tech person, you should get a or a marketing person, for example. You should get someone that everybody on the team are marketing or you want to do everything all by yourself. Respecting each other's strengths and weaknesses where when it comes to finance, I can default to him to say, okay, this is the idea I have in my head, but you come back and say, madam, this cannot work, but I have to respect. I think that has also helped us. Other organizations, what can they learn from you guys? The best thing is that as a team, I mean, if you look at us sitting here, uh, look at all our reach as long as we're in jeans and we're tired, <laughs> late in attire. It's, it's the collaborative effort of the team to believe that they want to work on it. Because sometimes it can be lonely if you're a sole founder and you need people around you to support you. Uh, that's very, very important. Two is relationships. Uh, build good relationships, keep good relationships, protect them. Because in the future, I mean, we hear from our history, we all came from different places, but there's a connected factor that brought us here. And there's a relationship before the farm problem. So those are things that I think could two key things from my own perspective that uh, people out there should be content and should focus on when building businesses. The next five years, ten years, where do you want to see farm crowd and what do you want people to know about farm crowd? So start with what you want people to know and then where you want to see farm crowd. Yes, I want people to see farm crowd as a piece of setting standards in the culture. Getting, getting young people interested in agriculture mm -hmm. and, and projecting Nigeria and Africa in a greater light. For me, I think it's more of um, seeing that indeed the farmers' lives that we work with is being improved on. Um, not just so we work with farmers, but they can testify sincerely so because farm probably came to work with us, um, our lives are better. Mm -hmm. For me, expanding beyond Nigeria, um, we've only scratched the surface. We've not gone far in Nigeria. And I know we are also supposed to touch and impact like in Africa and the world. So we've seen Farm Crowd as the global recognized household name um, in terms of impact in agriculture. In five years, we would have set standards that other people would follow. Yes, we are Farm Crowd and we can't actually do it all. We said uh, international stuff and all that. Let's keep empowering farmers together. together. Uh, uh, let's do it all together. Uh, let's improve the lives of the people that are putting food on our table together. Uh, 
and we're excited about what we will do in the next five years. We want to smash those goals in two years, if possible. Faster, faster. Uh, faster, faster, faster. <laughs> faster, faster. Um, uh, and then at the end of the day, uh, uh, we just have an impact in the world. Leave a legacy that our kids will be proud of that we actually did this um, for our country and for the continent. One that um, many years ago, you can look back on and say, yes, I'm proud that I was part of this project. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you.